studios in New York City. This is Charlie Rose. <laughs> Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio here. Their creative collaboration has been one of the most fruitful in film history. In 2002, they first worked on Gangs of New York. Since then, they have partnered on The Aviator, The Departed, and Shutter Island. They have just completed their fifth film. It tells the story of the rise and fall of Jordan Belfort. Belfort made millions through financial scheming until he was brought down by the government and sent to prison. Here is the trailer for the new film, The Wolf of Wall Street. Excuse me. Yeah. Is that your car on the lot? Yeah. Is yeah. it Jag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much money you make? I don't know. Seventy-two thousand last month. You show me a pay stub for seventy-two thousand dollars on it. I quit my job right now and I work for you. Hey, listen, I, I quit. Yeah, I'm going into stocks. My name is Jordan Belfort. At the tender age of 22, I headed to the only place that befit my high-minded ambitions. The name of the game? Move the money from your client's pocket into your pocket. But if you can make your client's money at the same time, it's advantageous to everyone, correct? No. I got it! I started my own firm out of an abandoned auto body shop. We will be targeting the wealthiest 1% of Americans. I love three things. I love my country, I love Jesus Christ, and I love making people rich. Hello? But I needed to mold them in my own image. With this script, I'm going to teach each and every one of you to be the best. This is the greatest company in the world! I was becoming a legend. Aren't you married? Yeah, but married people can't have friends. We're not gonna be friends. I was making so much money, I didn't know what to do with it. Twenty-six thousand dollars for one dinner. Dad, we're not poor anymore. Tell them about the sides. Hey, the what size? are these sides? They cure cancer. The sides did cure cancer. That's the problem. They were there. That's why they were expensive. <laughs> Twenty-two million in three hours. The real question is this: Was all this legal? Absolutely not. Hang you up from the heavens. He's got pictures of your whole inner circle. This is bad. It's okay. Rub my temple. You're all right. This right here is the land of opportunity. You just tried to bribe a federal officer. <laughs> this is America. This is my home. Good for you, little man. Come here, the little man. The show goes on. You have my money taped to your boobs. Technically, you do work for me. I'm pleased to have Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio at this table. Welcome. Thank you for so, having me. So you're watching the trailer. Just tell me what's going through your mind as you're watching what you have spent a lot of time putting together. What an insane endeavor this was. <laughs> really, truly. Insane. It was insane. Yeah. I mean, um, we're, we were taking on uh, material that I think was... Uh, very hard to get finance in the first mm. place. I mean, I, I keep talking about it as a, you know, a modern day fall of the Roman Empire yeah. or like a modern day Caligula, but it was, and the the hedonism was rampant, and and it was it was a depiction of you know uh, Jordan's bio biography and 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 how honest he was about his um, you know addiction to wealth and power and greed uh, during his Women time in Wall Street and, and all of that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But it was a wild shoot. It, re yeah. it really was. Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, you know, I only do, we only finished the film about <laughs> a few weeks ago. ago. Yeah, exactly. And so, I'm <laughs> seeing the trailer again, I'm tired all, all over again just looking at it. But uh, no, it was it was uh, uh, it was something that I didn't. Uh, you had brought it to me. Yeah. You brought you brought the script to me. And you had to beat out some people too. I mean, someone said that Brad that was interested and other people yeah, were that's, interested. Yeah, that's in. all the stuff that happens behind closed doors that yeah. I don't really understand, but I, I went after this book and, quite and, aggressively. But there was competition, yeah. and, but you wanted it because it was a story that you wanted to tell because it was, you know. Well, look, I mean, this is a satire and it's and it's a dark yeah. comedy, but, uh, you know, so was, so was Dr. Strangelove, yeah. you know, yeah. or it's, it's uh, we take a, you know, um, a funny approach to this, but ultimately what we're talking about is a very serious yeah. subject matter, and it represents yeah. 
something within our very culture. Yeah. I mean, and, and they're winners and losers, and lots of money. And people get hurt, and people make money, and absolutely. and all of that. And people go to jail, and absolutely. That's why I didn't. I never. I'm. I'm sorry, but I, I don't think I ever thought of it as a satire. I just thought of a straight story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is an accurate depiction. It's of, an accurate depiction. But their own yeah. life was yeah. a satire yeah. in a lot of ways. Oh yeah, sure. But <laughs> I think. Uh, I think uh, you know. T- I, I think you know. My my feeling is uh, is is uh, not to separate yourself from it. No, this is it, mm. I think. This is really it. This yeah. is the mentality, yeah. you know. And we were we were pushing it, but believe me, uh, uh, you couldn't, I mean, actually, we just scratched the surface of, yeah. uh, of just scratched element. the surface I think of, uh, the elements that were the there, the story could have told or whatever. But I, what I wanted to do at that point was, if we can't tell them all, compress it into such a way that we would throw the audience right into the maelstrom of this kind of thinking. Yeah. That's part of what happens if you're in there. You do get caught up. Yes. You almost feel like you're inside the room where all this madness is happening. You know, And some things you might not have even seen before. A lot of it's uh, just uh, truly unbelievable. I mean, I, I read this book and I couldn't believe that this man led this lifestyle and still survived. A, a, but didn't you, in fact, actually talk to him during the making of the film oh, or yeah. in some way? Quite, he, he... quite incessantly. Yeah. <laughs> quite incessantly. So tell us who he was. I mean, you, we know his story in the book, but you just said one interesting thing. He, he was truthful. Yes. To himself. That's what I think yes. I appreciated most of was that he, you know, to him, the book, I think, was a cautionary tale of his time on Wall Street. And since, you know, since that time, he's, he's a much different person. And he's actually depicted, as we depict him at the end of this movie, of somebody that's going around talking about the dangers of greed and, right. and uh, trying to, you know, get into the business sector with, with you know, um, some sort of moral yeah, foundation. Kind of Tony Robbins of his time. It, exactly. Yeah. But... Uh, his he was incredibly candid and, and and honest with me about what he went through and a lot of times he would we would talk about sections in the book and say not only was it that bad i was 10 times worse and i'm going to tell you why and i and i really appreciated that honesty because i think you know from marty's perspective he wanted to have a little bit of distance from that subject but i needed to speak to him uh, constantly just to get you know the nuances and the detail of 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 of, of what these mm-hmm. scenes were like, what this lifestyle was like. And, and what story were you telling, just so I want to nail it down with you two? I, mean, I think what, what I, what I, when I found my way in the material, because when I first read it, I, I felt that um, um, I, had, I had, in a sense, visited this before in other ways. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but I began to realize that, uh, that uh, <laughs> Um, it is about, it is about, uh, uh, in a sense, you could say, touch upon Goodfellas or Casino yeah, exactly. or pictures like that. Right. And as, in a way, here, though, there's a, there's a, a veneer of respectability. Yeah. And, um, and what I was, I was fascinated then by the possibility of a person who has that, um, has the, uh, um, the uh, talent yeah. of persuasion. Yeah. And yeah. and a what superb a, salesman. a superb salesman can yeah. sell anything, yeah. and where when that occurs, and when he's able to move, or he or she is able to move ahead that way, um, uh, is and if there is no restraint, yeah, hmm. what do we do? What if we were there? Are no censors. I mean, yeah, there's there are no, no censors. What, what, what would we do in a case like that? I mean, yeah. in our in our own way, do we give into our weaknesses? Yeah. Um, it's not only just him. It's it's uh, the confidence that's man. That's the kind of moral. Yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm putting myself story. aside above that. I mean, yeah. I've had my temptation own problems. Is temptation, I've yes. had my own problems in my life. So so the thing is, uh, in terms of uh, the confidence man. The confidence yeah. man takes your confidence. You confide right. in him. Yeah. You trust. You, try, yeah. you give him yeah. your trust, and then yeah. he betrays you. And the confidence man is always charming. It could be in, it could be in uh, business. It could be in art. It could be in love. Yeah. You have said that uh, uh, that the speeches were some of the hardest stuff because that's where you saw the art of salesmanship. Yeah. You saw how much he believed almost or did what yeah. he was saying, and it was almost messianic and. You know, well, you know, gospel-like. I had been thinking about the. I mean, Terry Winter wrote this incredible screenplay, really catered mm-hmm. for Marty and myself. And I'd been thinking about these speeches for for almost six years, and 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 uh, you know, mechanically breaking them down. But it wasn't really until I was on that stage where it kind of took on a life of its own. I, I kind of felt closer to what Jordan must have felt during that time period 
where he almost created a cult for himself yeah. and 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 being consumed by that adoration and 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 the power of you know uh, being able to provide great amounts of wealth to th- th- this mass of people that were worshiping him and and when I got on that stage it it kind of took on this incredible life of its own, and I, I kind of felt like I was Bono or some rock star, even though I knew, <laughs> even though I knew that these the, these you know actors were paid to clap every single time it's, it's, it's I was shouting the at them. <laughs> you get this incessant need to you know you know push them forward, and it, yeah. it almost became like this uh, you know brave heart speech or, or or cry for battle, except yeah. I was persuading them to go out there and you know essentially screw as many people over as possible. <laughs> Do not hang up the phone until you've got the sale. Right, exactly. you know. um, what's the magic here between the two of you? This is, I said, the fifth film. I mean, do you achieve something with an actor so that it's it's unspoken? It's you know the potential of him. You know. I, I think I, I think what's happened is that we go picture by picture, yeah. and and uh, I don't know it, it, in terms of. Uh, I think it really, really clicked on, um, I got to know each other on gangs in New York, but it really clicked on Aviator, I think, yeah. in that I saw that, um, you know, uh, it, not only the range is there, but range. I mean, you can ask, keep asking and you keep getting. That's yeah. what I mean by the range. And you can go further. Um, um, and so uh, the main thing for me was that is that, uh, uh, you know, we have similar sensibilities or similar tastes. And... Uh, um, what interests. Does that mean? What does that mean? Um, well, how does it play itself out? Attracting certain characters. Yeah. Not necessarily afraid to do, take certain risks. Mm-hmm. You know, with characters. Dealing with moral issues as well. Moral issues, yes. Right and wrong. Sin, yeah, right and wrong, and temptation in between, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where the line Jealousy, is. Jealousy, yes. <laughs> Crossing that, the line. Oh, you know, that sort yeah, of thing. Right, you know, right. man who flies planes and can't open door, can't touch a doorknob. <laughs> that's fascinating. Yes, um, that's right. And then that we was get into Howard Hughes. Yeah, and then we get into the departed and yeah. the sense of um, uh, uh, all these elements that came into that that yeah. story with Bill Monahan's script of the. Uh, uh, the sense of uh, his own guilt as a character who right. couldn't even sit still in a place and look over his shoulder somebody's going to come in behind him and, and, right. and get him for whatever he's done in his life and sure enough he is the informer yeah. you know um, but um, that and um, the Shutter Island where we where we even that was one of the hardest I think because um, you can't pin the character down at all because he's many different people yeah. And you don't even know the stories. The stories may not exist mm-hmm. ultimately by the end of the, by the end of the picture. Mm-hmm. And so we found oh, that was a labyrinth mm-hmm. going through that. But it took a while for me to come around to this one. Um, and and again, that's not necessarily coming around to this, to this story, this the story. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Because what happens is that it isn't like we're going to make another film together right away. It's the the, the atmosphere, the uh, the uh, the. Um, the tone of it has to be. We have to agree upon that. We have to be in the same in the same uh, uh, in the same city, so to speak, in a yeah. way. And you get um, that by conversations about conversations, the movie yeah, yeah. that you want to make. Conversations and you know saying, well, it, it, the problem with the film like this is that you can't. There's no sense, especially uh, at my age, going into a situation with a yeah. uh, a group of people who are going to let's say. You know, a studio situation where they they're going to say, "Well, there's maybe too much drug taking, or there's right. too much sex." Right. Or there's right. Too, right. I, I, at this point, there's no sense in me making the film because then it would be, I would just be constantly distracted by um, the levels of uh, of um, uh, restrictions. Yeah, and, and constantly. You, you, you want it, I can't you're do it. No part of that. I, I can't do it. I mean, well, eventually, <laughs> I can't do it. I, I, I yeah, can't I mean, do it. you simply can. You get to the phone. You get to the Don't door. You love it? <laughs> well, no, it's not like it would be. It, there's no sense in it because you, yeah. there's only so many That's right. breaths you can so take. So many subjects to see. Exactly right. That's exactly right. So, so here, why do it? So here he pointed out. We got you were involved yeah. with the Red Granite, which um, yeah. Which made it very, very possible for us to make the po- a, a movie that yes. could do what you need. You that had, we needed to have the freedom to, exactly. to yeah. yeah, and to write on a large canvas. Exactly, it all worked. It all goes. It all goes through the way it did Mean Streets and everything yeah. else. It goes right through the MPAA and everything else. We worked, yeah. we went, we towed the line, and this is the film we were able to make, and we feel comfortable with it. Uh, but um, uh, it's very hard, you know, because you have to deliver certain things the way the Hollywood marketplace is now. There's certain kinds of blockbuster pictures that they have to sell. I'm not. I don't believe I'm. I'm made for that. You know, <laughs> they need a certain kind of uh, a certain kind of product. 
which is theirs, which is fine. It's Thank just, God I, I, can't do, <laughs> I can't do it. I would try. Well, but you don't need to do it. I don't it. need <laughs> Now, but within that context, somebody will say, well, it, hey, most movies are a mile and a half, and here you have a three-hour movie. Do you simply say, this is what I need to tell the story that I was born to tell with this story? Mm, um, not a minute less, not a minute more. No, I try. I tried to cut it as much as possible. And this yeah. is where we. This is where we. When the when the dust settled, yeah. this is where we were. Thelma and I. Uh, Tell them who Thelma. Is. Thelma Schoonmaker is my editor since Raging Bull yeah. since uh, 1980, and both of us we moved um, the editing equipment into my house. Yes. And uh, just worked there day and night. I worked there day and night for a year on the picture. Uh, I really tried to get it as tight as possible. Uh, but then to take the risks to of of um, creating this uh, whirlwind of a picture, and then slowing suddenly scenes that would take yeah. long dialogue scenes that would stop the the you think it'd stop the flow, yeah. but because of what they're discussing, for example, um, oh, uh, uh, you know they have a they have an event at the beginning of the film where they they uh, uh, pick up uh, little people and toss them against. Uh, uh, targets. Yes. Uh, now, in order to do that in an office, and, you must have a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, the, if you're sitting at a meeting, you'd you be discussing, oh, what about safety? What about this? Right. Imagine what could come out of those meetings. So, <laughs> so to put yourself in that mindset, yeah. you know, and yeah. to play it long enough to make you actually start thinking about you, the realities. Did, mm -hmm. In this case, he's also the narrator. Yes. You know, was that a choice you had to make? I think that was there. In, uh, yeah, was it was in the screenplay. Yeah, yeah. that was there. Yeah. 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 And did you give him a lot of room for improvisation in this, or do you always do that with him because you know what he can do? Yes, but I think in case of uh, Shutter Island, it was different, and certainly yeah. Aviator. But uh, here, yeah, I think I mean, we there were are able scenes to. in this movie. Yeah, I'm not thinking about the scene when you're going back out to the car. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, you crawling around, yeah. not knowing where the hell you are. No, <laughs> no I mean that was. <laughs> that was what was interesting about this film, I think, m more than other films that we've done, because a lot of films we've done, I think, have been not, not beholden to a specific plot structure, but certain things needed to happen to result in a very specific ending. And, and this was a lot more freeform. It was kind of like organized chaos. We knew we weren't taking on classic American literature here. We're ultimately, you know, the, the, um, the character became the plot. Mm -hmm. And... I think more so than any of the other um, uh, films we've done, there was a lot to discover yeah. in, the, in, this, yeah. in this movie. Yeah. There was a lot yeah. to discover about the very nature of what we were trying to do. And it really didn't come alive until we were on set and we started yeah, that's working. That's what I was going to ask. I mean, if somebody became, once you were there doing oh, it, you yeah. saw the possibilities yeah. Yeah. of doing more. I mean, it was, it was just about everyone taking on this hedonistic attitude and, yeah. and, and uh, giving into every temptation possible and every every actor sort of had that you know air about them mm -hmm, on set mm -hmm. and and so it allowed for all these insane possibilities every single day i mean everyone would kind of push push <laughs> yes. the envelope but what was interesting more than anything and i think in this process it's the most fun set you'd ever been on yes it was but it was it was hard to get there in the morning sometimes because i knew i didn't know what was going to happen it was like an avalanche <laughs> no but but the truth is i mean we we improvised a lot of this beforehand but then when we got on set and working with the other actors, right. it became, it spiraled into a multitude of, of, of different directions. And it was, it was very freeing in a yeah, lot of ways. it really I think, was. And you know. there's certain things that happen. I mean, you know, uh, if it says he crawls across the floor, uh, the ground to get to his car yeah. and open the door and get in the car, well, the door opens up. I, yeah, I didn't I realize that. I forgot about it. I didn't, re yes, I didn't realize that <laughs> until we got them. Until I said, oh, I, I, they told me last week, of course, I forgot. And so I said, oh, no, now what do we do? It was up to him. <laughs> yeah. Use your feet. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't well, know how it was going to get that tour. I didn't know either. Until we got there. He yeah. said, should I use my foot? I said, it, it looks like Jacques Tati or yeah. Jerry Lewis. Or it's, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. So um, what's the magic between the two of you? I mean, what does he bring I mean, when you want to you work with somebody and you can work with almost anybody you want to? And, and you come back to a man you've worked with four times before this. Well, look, I mean, I went into this uh, venture and, and aggressively trying to find something uh, to work with Marty on with, with Gangs of New York, and I found that screenplay. And, uh, you know, ever since I got my first film, it was really, you know, my father who 
pointed out, you know, this great cinematic relationship with with De Niro and Scorsese, and, and started showing me these films. And you know, when you when you feel that impact at a very at a very early age, it makes quite an impression on you. And so, you know, once I got the opportunity, in essence, to, you know, finance pictures with my name, he was really the first guy that I, you know, aggressively went after to 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 collaborate on something with. And since then, you know, needless to say, the man knows more about cinema yeah. as an art form than anyone I've the history I've, of cinema and, than I've ever met in yeah. my life. Yeah. And so every movie has been this <laughs> this incredible education. incredible education for me, really. Yeah. And I've learned a lot more about you know um, what it is to be an actor and almost these kind of mantras. I mean, I you know. It's not this conscious thing that he does yeah. with me. He's not sitting me down and saying, look, kid, this is how you do it. For both of us, it's, it's a discovery uh, process, and it's a, con it's a constant conversation. Yeah. You and know? a constant collaboration. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and in this film, you know, uh, I keep saying this over and over, but my, uh, he said one thing to me, and that was, look, you know, we, we were very skeptical about putting these people up on film and the likability of guys that have, you know, in a sense, uh, destroyed the American economy, or at least that mentality uh, with these characters. And he said, look, as long as you portray people as authentically as you possibly can, and you don't try to sugarcoat their, their intentions, um, and you give an accurate portrayal of their very nature, audiences will go along with you on that. And that kind of clicked with me for the entire filmmaking process, and I kind of realized, you know, that's in a lot of ways uh, the way every film should be done. You yeah. know, you know. Did, did you have to go ahead? No, I was just going to say. It, 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 I was hoping that one of the one of the reasons I, I resisted at first, I didn't want to make any apologies for um, the way they behaved, in, in a sense, or try to be what's well, not apologies, yeah. but to to, uh, to even create a kind of. Um, I don't know. You just uh, want to capture the authenticity. Yeah, capture the authenticity. And, and but put you put you in the mindset and to see to see um, maybe out of, more out of frustration of the situation yeah. and, and the way things are now than anything else. Mm -hmm. And say, well, just go ahead and behave that you way. You never had a moment. You said, I've got to find a way to make him likable. No, not at all. And, no. and, oh, what you had to do is make. In fact, we resisted that as yeah. much yeah, as that's possible. What, that's <laughs> what I was trying to say. Yeah, there were people saying there were a lot yeah, of fine. pressure for us to uh, do uh, certain things. Uh, you know, yeah. I said, um, I think it's. It would just be imposing it on there. I said, you know, he is likable in the sense that the confidence man is likable. Yeah. You see. This is when Jordan meets a sexy woman named Naomi. A couple more times. <laughs> that scene. Yes. You should see what happens right after yeah. that. Scene. <laughs> That's what I, I was hoping. I'm glad you, you well, got well, there. Well, I'm glad you, you stopped. Give me, if you give me more tape, more film, I'll show more of it. <laughs> no. That was actually one of the hardest scenes to cut. Yeah. Actually, we were cutting that to the last Why minute. Why was that hard? I don't know, there was something about the looks or the... Yeah. Um, uh, the glances, how many times he's asked about the jet skis, yeah. all of that. Take that out, then the edge. The, if you do too much, the edge that you had with Blair would have been lost. And uh, yeah. it was just one of them. Went to cut to his wife. Mm -hmm. Went to cut to See, Hildy that, coming this over. This is the thing about filmmaking that people don't even just, think about. Yeah. Right, it, it disappears. Morning, but you know? all of a sudden, it just didn't happen that way. <laughs> I know. It happened because it was a director and mm -hmm. actor, and, you know, who knew what what the possibilities were. But no, a lot of you know. Uh, Marty's obviously brilliant on set, but the process that he has with Thelma is pretty miraculous. I mean, they they they're they're old school. You know, they they sit there and it's one on one, and they and they cut this film frame by frame, and, and it's 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 like a sculpture for them. They don't uh, they're not rushed in their process, and that it's this constant dialogue between it, the two of them. The, they've been collaborating for such a long period of time, and that's where so much of I mean, it's a cliche, but so much of the the magic happens in, 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 his, in his filmmaking. In fact, you've said that's where you're the happiest. Yes. Yeah, we we had the best time, Thelma and I, yeah. in that way, and um, because you know you've got a lot of great performances, and you can decide how you use them, how you bring them in, the music, how the music plays. Yes, exactly. I work out the music, and I, yeah. so. But the thing is, of course, the uh, it's if we're even if we're in trouble, we know we, the trouble is there. Okay. We have it. There are ways to go. There are people yeah. to call. We work out things. Work it out together without a thousand people around us and the clock ticking away. Can you take a good performance and make it into a great performance in the editing room? I think you can. I think you can. I think it's in the he eyes. did it with me. <laughs> <laughs> You're here to say he can. <laughs> well, they're all good. Margot, Margot Robbie is fantastic. Oh, yeah. She's, uh, uh, you know, in the yeah. uh, she she plays uh, she plays Naomi and uh, this uh, everybody in the picture just came up to a certain level. That uh, yeah, and uh, Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill 
Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. The Especially great Jonah Hill. The great Jonah Hill. <laughs> did, did. A great you know, person he, and a great, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, it he, was, was. he was really, uh, in a lot of ways, uh, essential <laughs> to the tempo of this movie. I think that uh, he came in with the right attitude, you know, mm-hmm. right off the bat. He said, I, am, I know who these people are. I've seen this world. I've seen people consumed by wealth and greed. And, and, and I, I can depict this character better than anyone, so I immediately... Uh, you know, told Marty about it, and they had this incredible meeting. And, and right away, he was he was he yeah, was he hired. He, he he won an audition. Yeah, for an, he he read a scene. He wanted I, to audition. Yeah, but I didn't pay attention to the audition. It's just him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he's an incredible improvisational actor. Oh, yeah. an, an you incredible. said, in fact, as good as you've seen. Uh, yeah. some of the probably the best, yeah. probably yeah. the best improvisational yeah. actor I've ever worked with. I mean, it's uh, it's amazing when you can you know have a certain. Uh, thought process for what you think a scene's going to be and then somebody comes in and tears everything apart in front of yes. you and you have to ride with it. You have and, to and, ride and with it and you have to react to it in real time <laughs> yeah. and all of a sudden it becomes something entirely different and and that was the kind of that was the freedom of the attitude that we had while making this movie. And that's, he would stimulate you to do things that you hadn't even uh, imagined doing. Ab- absolutely. Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. In fact, a couple of times... Oh, sorry. Go, no, go ahead. No, a couple of times. Remember the a couple of times where you and PJ and a number of the guys had to actually try to stop him. Please shut up and be quiet. And then he would stop. He wouldn't say anything. Then I said, why aren't you talking? He like, told me to be quiet. Right. Yeah. This is where Donnie, the character that Jonah Hill plays, tells Jordan he wants to work for him. Here it is. Exactly. That's what, tell me what that is. The timing issue is that literally when you hear, hey, Paulie, how are yeah. things? Uh, we went back and forth on that one. Yeah, yeah. See? That's mm-hmm. the that's the problem, and also yeah. when to jump it. In other words, to try to break the form, to get the impression that the picture is in a, in a conventional narrative form in terms of editing, but then to push and break um, uh, the continuity, mm-hmm. and not not uh, I don't mean continuity in terms of um, uh, just mismatches. I mean massive mismatches. They don't mm-hmm. matter because the 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 rhythm of the story should go with the rhythm of the way they're thinking. And so the images should go the same way. Mm-hmm. And we just kept cutting, uh, ripping things apart, really. So a lot of that dust stuff doesn't match at all. Okay, I want to introduce one more character. This is your father, played by Rob Reiner. <laughs> your father, Max, who's really interesting in this. Here's a scene between Jordan and his father. Stop. <laughs> for, for an actor, mm-hmm. as we were watching this scene, I mean, you had... You had a lot of different kinds of things to work with. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you want to stretch yourself and broaden yourself and and think of all the things you've done, including the four films for him before this, you know, I would think this is like, you know, this is a huge menu. Yes. Oh, like I said, there was an incredible freedom in this process. And, you know, once you set up uh, characters whose one and only concern is their own indulgence, the script was set up that way. It's almost like this... Um, this uh, drug-infused ride that we go on that where, where people are are incredibly motivated by greed and we don't really see the wake of their destruction. We didn't need to do, very consciously, we didn't cut away to the, to the ramifications of their actions. We didn't cut away to the people on the other end of the line to yeah. see how they were affecting, you know, the guy that just lost his mortgage. It was this hypnotic, you know, voyage forward, constantly consuming everything within, within your path. And, when you when you set up that kind of attitude on set, you know it's it's every actor's sort of dream. You know yeah. you don't you have no moral compass and you have nobody to answer to except yourself. So yeah. it freed all of us up, really. Yeah. I think and there is, really is no moral landscape there anymore. Yeah. in a sense. And uh, uh, if you do have any moral qualms, take, just take a few drugs and mm-hmm. get some of the I mean, the drugs thing, the quaaludes is just. I mean. It, mm. Right. Yes. <laughs> that yeah. Quaalude sequence. It <laughs> yes. almost became a film within the yeah. film. Yeah. It did. Yeah, it yeah. really did. With the, yeah. It was through the, I think it was a lot, a lot through the pre-production process where we were combining different scenes and adding tension right. to it, mm-hmm. add, adding tension to it, you know, bringing in the sort of Popeye cartoon. Yeah. yeah. What would happen I, I if, couldn't believe that when I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, were, we were talking and, uh, with uh, Terry and you and me, and all yep. of a sudden Popeye's on the I said, the kid is there. The kid is watching cartoons. Yeah. Popeye, yeah. fantastic. Oh, wait, spinach. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's natural progression. Mm. No, but the, also the fact that Donnie, you know, the, the, the fact that he apologizes to me with some of the most powerful quaaludes on the marketplace <laughs> because he messed up a money deal. And and then that then you follow these two guys as he simultaneously finds out that 
the FBI is, you know, bugging his home. And then Donnie's on the phone with the Swiss bankers. He's got to get back simultaneously. You know, um, they they fight with each other. I, I don't want to. No, I don't want to ruin the no, whole no, no, thing. No, no. But actually, it's, actually, it's a very originally, you're making yeah. it more interesting rather than ruining it. I mean, it, it, there's also the moment when he's wearing a wire and he has to tell him, doesn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's sort of who he is. Yeah. I can't not tell you. Yeah, To incriminate yourself. Well, I think that, um, you know, I think Jordan at that time was uh, very very morally twisted, obviously. But that was one of the key moments in the script between those two characters where he he can't quite... You know, he can't quite rat on his friend. He's got to let him know what he's doing. And ultimately, the the landscape of where they were at is so corrupt in its own right that it's, it envelops it him and all the characters yeah. that's yeah. around them. So that's an interesting moment in the movie, too. And and who who was it that played his, his wife, who, Naomi? Margot Robbie. Margot yeah. Robbie, Margot Australian Robbie. actress. Uh, she just really came in. We, oh, we auditioned yeah. a lot of Boy, a lot great. of girls, and yes. it's yeah, amazing. She's really good. She? Yes, excellent actress. And, yeah. uh, she, she, I saw. I'm seeing. That's why I didn't know. Her. Oh, she's amazing. Well, there's something uh, about Australian actors too. I mean, I got to work in The Great Gatsby, and they just yes. work three times harder <laughs> than everybody else. <laughs> They're this isolated little <laughs> island. They're, they're down there. They know so about gonna... American <laughs> movies. They work their ass off, and she came yeah. in and just uh, she knocked it out. She, she really, really did. did. Oh yeah. boy! Now, did you she give her much direction, him. or she didn't need much? No, really? she didn't need much. I mean, we could see it right away in the audition. Yeah, uh, she came in. Now, what did you see? That she had. Well, she was the character you imagined. Uh, she was the character, or she was able to handle him just by a look. Oh, yes, I remember the first the look. Eyes. Mm-hmm. Well, the eyes. That's it. the second Yeah, one. yeah, that when, was it. When and, he came uh, to her house. And especially, especially, we did, um, oh, in yeah. the audition scene, we did the scene where she, uh, where she uh, wakes him up, yeah. rather, you know, uh, yeah, right. rudely with a water. glass of water. Yeah, right. And um, she stood up to him, no matter yeah. what he said or yeah, did. I thought that was interesting, too. I mean, the tension there in terms of the way she stood up to you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was not a pushover. No, 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 no. She knows what she's doing. And that was necessary, I assume. Yes, Yes, yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But it was also necessary for him to deny as much yeah. as possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could forget things like that that were going on. <laughs> it slips your mind. Dominatrix. Yeah. Dominatrix. Oh, yeah, handles. I saw that part. Too. Yeah, that, you know, he just slipped his now, mind. See, now, did he like that? That's what I was, my first thought when I saw that scene was, oh, yeah. this, yeah, this is Jordan. Well, yeah, Jordan happens. must have liked it. Yeah, he liked it all of it. <laughs> he liked all of it. He didn't even remember <laughs> for a while there. But no, my attitude with all of this, which is why it wasn't embarrassing in a lot of stuff, yeah. It is embarrassing. Yeah. I played it like a, you know, kind of like he was a Roman emperor, and yeah, he was exactly. indulging in every possible it thing that he could. Yeah. yeah. I mean, short of you know maidens feeding us grapes, there's everything <laughs> you know in the modern day context yeah. in this movie. Now, what do you have to do to make sure you don't have ratings problems? Well, I, um, I was able to, uh, as to I cut. said, I've had a long time with the ratings board right, since '73, right. but here. Um, they they um, just really asked us to tone down as uh, what we could of yeah. uh, the accumulation of the um, sexual uh, images. In other words, the, the sum total of it. The sum total of it. Yeah. yeah. So in certain areas, and so we yeah. went in and. But by the way, in our rough cuts, yeah. And when we were screening it for our friends and uh, friends of friends of friends, very often, um, you know, you're cutting the picture, you're trimming it. The first cut was four hours and five minutes. Right, so you you know, where is it too well? There's too much, and that came up a lot. It came up a lot. So. It was not just MPAA. It was it was uh, a lot of people, my friends whom I trust, saying, you know, we get it here. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, can want to move and on. And you listen to them in terms of yeah, editing. yeah, in certain yeah. places. Then we said, which I can't give up that shot. Yeah. See, I can't give up. Well, try this one. Well, <laughs> no. I want to go with that one. Well, what you was know. the hardest thing for you to give up? Uh, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. I don't. I don't feel. I don't yeah, feel okay. bad about so, any of it. I think the 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 um, the plane. The, there was a big I heard party. That you had to edit a little bit. We of trimmed that. on that, yeah, but that yeah. was enough. I think it was fine. It was, I couldn't. I hadn't yeah. devised a shot for it anyway. Yeah. If I had devised a very clear shot for it, I'd say that's one thing. Instead, I took the shot and made it uh, in the uh, hotel room afterwards, which was a yeah. uh, overhead tracking shot of the debris. Oh, yeah. That's where the shot is. But in the, yeah. in the plane, it's showing what they're doing. So in order to tighten and everything else, I had no problem. In other yeah. words, this is the director's cut. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically it. There's some frames here yes, and there. That's is. about all. You know, <laughs> glimpses and we're seeing the director's cut, yes, we aren't are. we? Yes. We really are. Yeah, 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 yeah. And thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you were when you're going through all of this and and making this movie, um, what was the hardest thing for you? 
Well, I think the hardest part was because they're the, on drugs all the time. All the time was yeah. was just the pre-production process in a lot of ways. I think that you know, you know, constantly reaffirming to ourselves the type of movie that we wanted to do, the fact yeah. that we wanted to take a lot of chances, and really questioning. You know what an audience, how an audience would react to all of this stuff. We had to kind of reaffirm that within one another. There was a lot of different, you know, sequences where um, the character could have gone another direction. Yeah. But we, we, we kind of said to ourselves, look, you know, um, um, I mean, there was one in particular <laughs> where it, it starts to get very dark towards the end of the movie, and yeah. and 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 Jordan does some pretty horrific things to his wife, and you know, I remember. Um, you know, somebody yeah. bringing up the subject of, of whether the audience would still be with our lead at that point, yeah. and whether we'd betray an audience. And and Marty and I kind of well, looked at each other and said, "Look, <laughs> we're going to portray this guy the way he, he is, depicted yeah. himself." Because in you this thought book. authenticity would make him well, more appealing, more, yeah. more truthful because you, to you what we've been doing. You had into that place. Yeah, we were there. That why culture, why that at that point go the exactly other way? Right. And yeah. I just didn't. We just didn't feel it to be more. We had to be a little more truthful to. Uh, to what we felt also about how we felt, you know, maybe you feel about yourself or you feel about your own self and you feel about yourself in situations like that or mm -hmm. if you, uh, uh, or in points of, uh, in your life of crisis and how you behaved in the past and uh, who, mm -hmm. who you, you know, mm -hmm. judge over it. You see? Well, sitting here talking to you, I get, a, get the impression that you guys think you made the movie you wanted to make. Absolutely. Feel that. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Absolutely, and that's definitely. very rare. Exactly, and that's my second point. It's an, it's incredibly rare to truly get to make the movie, especially on this scale, because when you're yeah. making a, a, an almost an American epic yeah, exactly. about greed and, and indulgence and uh, you know hedonism like this, you you really have to cater to a studio in a lot of ways. You have to cater to the audience, and and this we we had financiers and collaborators that said, look, not only do we want you to uh, put this material up on screen, but we want you to push the envelope with it. We, you know, you know, be free artistically to go to places that you never imagined. And so, you know, that was w one of the big motivators with me with to, to try to get him to do this because I knew that there was there was there weren't that many directors that would really yeah. take the time to explore that within the characters. I mean, it's I, I keep uh, you know referencing this one uh, line in Goodfellas, but you know that's out of the, the experimentation with the actors getting to play, even if it's not intricate to the structure of the plot. It's, you're capturing something about the very essence of who they are, which ultimately shapes the course of what the movie is. You know, he's, he's interested in, in character studies. He's interested in what the actors do to capture the essence of who these people are. Now, what's the line in Goodfellas? Uh, you know, what am I kind of, what am I here to amuse you? I, I kept asking him about that, and he said, That's look, true. that was, what wasn't yeah. even in the script. The yeah. guys just got around, and they started talking. Yeah. But to me, that signifies everything that the movie's about. Well, that, that they're they're at a table, they're yeah, friends, but came. there's a danger there that yeah. if you cross a line with me, well, in one yeah. second, yeah. that's the essence of the lifestyle. The essence yeah. of the lifestyle is in one second it can change. You're dead. Uh, exactly. You yeah. yeah. And that actually is a Joe Pesci thing that actually happened to him. And um, so he said, how about this? I said, no, what, absolutely. What do you mean happened to Joe? No, I think it's something that he has he experienced, experienced in his life. Yes. I see. If you cross me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were talking. Everything was fine. All of a sudden, uh, yeah. it changed. Yeah. And when it changed, you had to think fast. Yeah. You know? Uh, Goodfellas is one of your favorite films. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think of his films, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the one that really moved me the most was uh, was Taxi Driver, I think. Yeah. Mm. I remember watching it at, at 15 years old and, and being transfixed with Travis 15. Bickle because I was, yeah. I was um, locked into this character and I felt such incredible empathy towards I understood him. I understood his loneliness and then he deceived me, yeah. you know? And at the point he deceived me, I said, what, who is this guy that I'm watching? Mm. Who is this person? And... And I, I was identifying with, with him, and I was with him on this whole journey. And all of a sudden, this is not the person that I thought he was. And 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 to me, it's just really the greatest um, independent film ever it's, made. It's, it's, it really uh, is. Schrader's uh, extraordinary. Paul Schrader. Well, Paul Schrader script. I think and, you uh, had something to do with yeah, it. Yeah, no, but he, he, Paul. Paul went through a lot on that one. He he yeah. did a beautiful delivered this. Just it was amazing. And De Palma gave me the script. Brian De Palma. Is that right? He said you got to read this thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you <made it. laughs> but you were going around Hollywood with that script in hand saying, this is the movie that I want to yeah, do. Yeah, get away from me. I hadn't made Mean Streets yet. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. Get away, kid. Get and exactly. then suddenly we did Mean Streets and they said, oh, but De Niro yeah. and you. Yeah. Different. No yeah. one's going to make that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I was like so annoying. <laughs> D- didn't didn't uh, Bobby De Niro suggest you should take a look at him well, yeah, way back absolutely. when, that, before Gangs started. of New York or somewhere? Yeah. Before that. Yeah, it yeah. was uh, This Boy's Life. Uh-huh. And um, then I saw, I always tell the story because I saw, I saw I, I hadn't seen it in the theater, um, uh, Gilbert Grape. Right. And um, it was on television, but I thought it was a documentary at first because yeah. the acting was so... Yeah. I hadn't really, I hadn't recognized anyone. I didn't know you in it. And, and then I sat, sat and watched the entire picture and we were amazed, you yeah. know. Are you, are you now able to use, uh, able to make the movies you want to make? In other words, are you at this place, which is a good place to be? I I'm mean, trying. it's hard to find ones that you want to make, I assume, or maybe there are a lot of them. I'm, I'm trying. I mean, really, the, I have a production company, but it, it was really set up uh, selfishly to find material outside of the studio system, stuff that I found a little bit different outside the box that that could be shaped f- from the very beginning and catered to be something that I wanted to do as an actor. Because a lot of times, once it goes through the system, it, turns, it could be a great premise, but it can turn into something entirely different. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, I, even in my career, I think that films like Aviator or films like Blood Diamond that I did are in, almost impossible to get yeah. finance, no matter who's a part of it. Mm-hmm. And it, and it really takes, you know, we, we 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 always talk about the '70s, the age of the director, the age of the blockbuster. But I've even seen it in the last the last ten years. The the, the business changes, and the, thank God for I think outside sources of people that have run into you know. Uh, into wealth that are fans of movies and say, look, I think there's a marketplace for something else. There's a marketplace for an mm-hmm. epic of this nature that doesn't check all the boxes of, you know, explosions and, uh, you know, uh, uh, fighting and robots or whatever. It, yeah. You know, we can, you can make a movie like this. We're going to, we're going to, we're gamblers. We're going to take a risk on this type of film. And thank God that there's, you know, uh, people out there that fill that gap because a lot of the films that we're seeing now, I think that are, are, are are different are, are coming from these mm. outside sources mm-hmm. which raises the question of television you know take house of cards take yes exactly you know breaking, exactly. Bad, breaking take, bad i mean terry winter who wrote this script um, yeah. uh, that's how we met and uh, and uh, we came up with the hbo series uh, boardwalk empire yeah. from this from this experience boardwalk, right, right yeah and so uh, but it's fascinating to me because what we had wanted to try i think in the in the 70s too was to uh, uh, it was going that way. Pictures were getting longer. Bertolucci had made uh, Novacento at five and a half hours. Uh, right. You know, I mean, <laughs> the films are getting longer. The idea of exploring um, uh, character and story and atmosphere to the almost like uh, novels in a way that can go on for. Well, Sopranos went on for sixty hours. Yeah. You see, um, and so this is something that may be um, may be the place for. Uh, the development of the new cinema, really. I mean, it, 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 but the new cinema, the old cinema just was what it was, and right. it's gone. That's it. Right. So we just move on, and we take advantage of what is new, the new technology, the new marketplace. If the new marketplace makes uh, films like, you know, uh, that are bigger blockbusters, some of them are very good. Fine, there's a place for that, but it's important for the young people to know that there's other kinds of cinema. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and there has to be, we have to fight for the space to make yeah. those pictures, whether it's... Uh, uh, whether it's like uh, you know uh, the, the Anderson films uh, or oh, yeah. um, Coen Brothers or Max Alexander Anderson, Payne, Wes Anderson, Wes and, and Paul Anderson. Thomas and Paul Thomas and, and uh, the Coen Brothers and, and Alexander Payne. There's got to be places where they, they should be supported. To, yeah. You know that was the thing in the 70s. They were supported. I don't feel that way now. I think it's a struggle for. for I, I may be speaking out of turn for them. I don't know, but I do feel there's a struggle for even the the. The, the most moderate budget uh, picture to be made. And if you don't get it made, or if you do get it made and people don't see it, because there's always that problem of the distribution to getting to see it. Right. There are pictures you don't see anymore. They go straight to um, video. You know, of course now, ultimately, uh, pictures will be shown, you know, um, mm. through the satellite. There are all and, kinds of platforms now. All strong, kinds of platforms. But, you know, which yeah. is remarkable. Which, which is great. But it's now this period 
uh, Lucas was talking, George Lucas was talking about it, the period of like 10 years. It's going to be of a dark zone in a way. We're not going to know exactly where things are going to land in yeah. terms of how these things will be presented 10 years from now. But at the same time, I mean, and thinking about the technology, because you still are in love with film and not... Yes, yes, boy, yes. You know. Yes. <laughs> he did this movie still, film. Is that right? Yeah, yeah we shot you most did, of it, But yeah. you shot nothing for, I mean, for dailies or anything? Oh, no, no, we, we, we did. The dailies were, were uh, video, uh, but, and, but uh, digital, I did shoot digital at night. Yeah. Because I'm not, we can't light the streets anymore. Yeah. I can't, it takes too and much time. And you so much easier. You yeah, yeah, you can really, dark, beautiful cameras are good. Yeah. Yeah. So you combine film and digital? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, to, to sit here, his enthusiasm <laughs> is so great, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, I mean, after all the films and all the awards and all the achievements, it's mm. like you're talking to someone who's 21 years old. <laughs> yeah. You know, and well, has all these skills and all this love of the craft mm -hmm. of Absolutely. making films. And, 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 and he gives you a great appreciation for film as an art form, you yeah. know, and. And sometimes that, that's undermined, I think. I think people, to me, it's the great modern art form as well. But, you know, not to speak for him, but I keep thinking of, you know, uh, the stories he tells uh, as a young man watching movies incessantly over and over with his, with his father and the impression that he must have had of what has been achieved in, in cinema's history. And, and I think that if there's anything we share, I, I share that too. I, I share a great appreciation for what's been done before me. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like this, um, you know, the, this, it's, it's, it's reaching for the clouds. You're, you're trying to constantly achieve something that great within your lifetime. And, you know, you have to keep questioning yourself, it, did, did I do that? And I don't think that's a thirst that's ever truly quenched. Right. You know, you, yeah. you keep pushing yourself forward and, and, and wanting to achieve something as great as, 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 as the came great before you. as, as you came before you. Because you stand on the shoulders of giants, as they oh, say. Exactly. And you have yeah. a responsibility Masters. You know, to, yeah. to, to carry the tradition yeah. and not interrupt the process. You know, yes, interrupt that's the one of the things with our relationship, too, that he, uh, he'll bring to me, um, oh, you know, uh, did you, this incredible film by this guy named Tarkovsky. Yeah. I said, oh, yes. yes. Which one? Solaris. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, Solaris. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So let's take this. Do you yeah. remember the scene with the yeah. cars at yeah. night? The cars are traveling the mesmerizing yeah. sequence. The yes. Mm -hmm. So his father would show him this stuff, see? And um, so yeah. we have, another, for example, on this film, he turned me on to the Mills Brothers. Is that right? Yes. Now, I had to explain I knew about the Mills Brothers. <laughs> 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 Are there any ink spots, Marty? Yeah, well, the Mills Brothers and the ink spots to uh, the Flamingo, you know. So I'm saying, yeah, yeah. and then you listen to Louis Jordan and Elephant Stravel. I said, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did, did you, you used to show actors and write them in and, and just have them watch a lot of films yes. as part of your both friendship and as part of what you wanted to infuse with each of them. Yes, yes. On, on this one, I don't think we did much. Yeah. I don't think we... He didn't send you and say, you ought to watch this or this or this. No, we didn't need to. Probably because he already watched most of them. Yeah, we didn't need to. It's Sweet Smell of Success really yeah. is the key. You know, yeah. Sidney Falco right. uh, is like uh, is like uh, the Jordan Belfort character. You know, yeah. uh, but um, did we didn't you see really that need to. before this? Or not? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. At his suggestion or? I'd seen it before, yeah. beforehand. No, but I think this film, yeah, this film was... Uh, different in its approach. Films like Aviator specifically, yeah. I mean, we, we watched uh, film after film, sometimes just to get the, the specific tone of, of one sequence. But, uh, you know, this film was, I think, a little bit uh, different, more radical. And it, it, Like I keep saying, it was this real discovery process to see what would happen, you know, if, if we put ourselves in that environment and, and you know, gave the actors the freedom to do what they wanted. Yeah. It was very mm -hmm. experimental in that in that way. Yeah, and for example, maybe and, spontan and spontaneous. And spontaneous. Right. For I mean, example, yeah, okay, okay, go sorry. ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. but like the the Matthew McConaughey. Oh, uh, Matthew McConaughey. I mean, these. Uh, yeah. I mean, I remember He's the day. Well, it's almost like uh, you know his character is is. Um, you know, bringing me into Dante's Inferno. He's the messenger that is bringing yeah. me into the depths of hell. You know, and yeah. and you know, Matthew came up, came up to us and said, "I have an idea for this scene." And he brilliantly came up with this sort of rewritten monologue that um, was so outrageous. Marty immediately said, "Yes, do that." But then this sort of chest thumping thing that he did that became yeah. the almost mantra of greed. Well, you pointed oh, yeah. it out to I, me. I remember, you pointed yeah. out to me. Say so he's doing something. Yeah. Uh, that in between takes. And I think it's a vocal exercise. I said, so listen to it. So I listened. I said, do you think he should do it? I said, why not? 
Let's try it. Mm -hmm. And then he went with it mm -hmm. and started adding uh, inadvertent, you know, sort of like hesitant <laughs> bird calls. <laughs> right. What the hell you would do? But then he continued and he made it almost like this uh, 80s uh, rap at the end of, of, yeah. of, of Wall Street. And then yeah. we kind of took that theme and we were doing the, my sort of final speech to the troops. And that became the mantra yeah, of greed. You know what I mean? Yeah. But oh, it was yeah. that fun. It, it was, was a mantra of greed. Yeah. You're and right. It became this. Uh, but that, that, like I said, that was what it was like on set. It was, it was a very free atmosphere.